Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. So I have to make up some frames out of RHS, so I've decided to buy a bar bender. And this is the one I decided to choose. This is a hand pipe bender. And they are available from eBay as well. Certain ones exactly the same, but they only actually have the round forms or round dies with them. So unfortunately I couldn't buy the $167 one, which is identical, because it didn't have the two forms for the square RHS the square steel that I wanted to bend. So unfortunately I have to spend another 130 bucks and buy the $300 one. So as any good tradesman we like our tools and that's why I'm just sharing with you this tool experience and it might help you out somewhere down the line. As traders we all use a multiple variety of tools and we love our tools and they're there when we need it. It's part of our arsenal. Now this is the one I went for here. It's available $2.95 online on eBay plus freight. So it was actually cheaper just to go down to my local store and go and buy one. So I bought it from a store that sells all sorts of industrial sort of machinery like this. I generally don't buy too much off them because they are expensive but I decided to on this occasion uh, because they're just down the road and I could pick it up and if it fails I could kind of take it back if, or if it falls apart. So looking over their catalogue here they had a couple of other tube benders here but as you see the price ranges you're talking $1,100, $1,200 just to bend one or two particular types of shapes. So I wasn't able to really budget in for that because of what I'm using it for this time around and what I'll use it for in the future. I thought, you know, I'm better off with this one here that has seven or eight different dies so I could do a variety of things and bolt it down to the pedestal that I already have. So that's the one um, I went for. Here it is here, just doing a quick unboxing as it comes. It's like 28 kilos. It's not lightweight and it has all the different sizes on it here. Six, so we'll see how that goes. Uh square tube forms um, three quarter and one inch so I'm pretty sure that's uh, 20 and 25 round forms three eighths half nine sixteenth five eighths three quarter and seven eighths so it doesn't do a full inch so about 20 I think is the biggest we can go on round okay so here's our material here 25 20 and I'm going to try cold bending this so our wall thickness here 1.9 it's going to be interesting it says wall thickness 1.2 this should be 1.6 we're getting 1.7 a few of the times one point yeah 1.6 1.3 1.4 1 so I think the 20 is going to be 25 is going to be better all right let's unpack this Let's check again here. Okay, so that one fits in nicely. But the other one, not so nicely. Uh, we can back. So I found a way to hold it now. Um, I flipped the vise upside down and that seems okay. So we got that on there. This is our form for underneath here, so this needs to be rolled back. And we've got to put the right right size uh, part in it. Okay, so we want square. Go round, 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 round. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That means we use the same for three quarters as we do for one inch. Okay, that moves. Okay. So I'm guessing that just hits on there so it can't go any further. Go up and around to create the bend. Yeah. 
first bend is the hardest. Come on. Okay, a few score marks. A little distortion, not much. No distortion there, so I guess that's a nice bend. I bent up what I wanted to bend up. Um, here we are here, just basically a handle. I should have marked it a little bit better because it is on a slight slight bit of an angle, but I can still uh, rectify that anyway. So the tube bender itself. Okay, so I had a lot of trouble. I gave it a slight grind in there because the actual material doesn't, doesn't fit in there. So that's here. Actually had to mill that out so that um, it can take it properly. Uh, there is a small little lunk here that hits that lump there, had to find that, so it, um, it's on the top, what size is on the top, that's the right way up. I bolted it down, the vice didn't work. Um, other than that, my piece of material actually gets stuck in there because it's too tight a form, so hopefully bending 25 is going to be a lot more fun. Um, I didn't try the, the tubes, and this one is actually, this one's actually bigger than 25, it's like 26. Okay, and there are the curves there. So not much of an indentation on that side, small indentation on that side, not much of a push in there, not much of a push in there, so they're fairly neat. Okay, so that's a 180 degree bend, I was only able to do 150 and then I had to actually literally bend it on the floor uh, to get the remainder. Here's another one here, as you can see there. I could only go so far, so this part of the bend was fine, but when I got to this point here, I was actually pushing up against the die to try and get that little bit more, because when we got to here, both of them were out here, you know, so I want to bring it to 180. When I did, kinked straight in. To get this bend here, um, we had to keep moving it, moving it. it. Didn't work very well. This is my uh, extension bar from a, from a roller door. Look how long that is. So we put that one in, that one in. This is what's left of it after I've finally bent my two bits of metal. This hasn't um, broken yet, but to get, a, to get the piece of material away from the die, one day it might break. I've had to put an edge on right here, if you can see that, so that when, when it rotates around, it can actually lock in there with a lunk, so that I can actually finish off to get that 180. So that's not even held in there, um, and then I can just finish off. That's pressed in there so tight that I actually need to get a sledgehammer, take this off, put the bar through it and knock it down. I'll show you that. Basically, I've put uh, bars on the end here, you know, like this, trying to get it out of the, trying to get it out of the die, like that. But basically, you just keep bending it. So you bend it this way, and then you bend it back, and you lose strength in your material. So um, 150 degrees, as I'll say, what its maximum is. So I could bend 150, but to get that 180 was really, really difficult. And this is in there so tight that I can't separate them both. Okay, so in conclusion, um, last time I used a bar bender was about 15 years ago. I was very excited to actually purchase a bar bender. And after I've purchased it and I've done a few bends, it wasn't really quite what I expected and um, wasn't as good as how I remember it bending, being able to bend up. And sure, if you want to leave your comments about how bad a bar bender I am or if I did this or that wrong, leave it down in the description down below. But in all fairness, the quality of this particular bar bender, it's pretty raw. I mean, I reckon it was made in India. It's made from cast. It didn't actually break, even though I was hitting it pretty hard to get it apart. But, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Here's um, where I actually had to hit it with the grinder so that I could spin it around the other way so that I could actually um, complete the bend. They really should have made it so it could be used on both sides, but they only made it 
used on one. That's the size of the leverage pole I was using. And as you see, that's from here to Texas. That's pretty long. And it just goes on and on. And there's a lot of weight needed to be I had to put all of my weight behind it to get it to move. This is the actual box it comes in. And yeah, it's pretty hard to get back into the box as well. It'll probably go back to the box and sit there for a couple of years, to be honest with you. But once you line it all back up and all the rest, then you can actually just get it back in the box. So packaging was a bit rough there as well. That's WD-40. I had to use half a can on it just to get a couple of pipes bent because they, they fitted in so tight on the pole that I just couldn't get them out. So a bit of WD, probably should have used grease. I even wore gloves as well because I was getting this oil everywhere and it just started to be become a little bit annoying. This unboxing video, normally a bit of the joys in the unboxing, but I got just as much joy putting it back in the box as I did actually getting it out of the box. I thought taking it out of the box would be the highlight, but it wasn't. Putting it back in the box and not looking at it again was a highlight for me. In short, this is a poor man's bar bender. Um, not happy with it at all. A bit of a waste of 300 bucks, to be honest with you. Um, not happy with the quality, not happy with the bends, not happy with the way it performs. It's a poor man's bar bender. So yeah, even here it even cracked in the middle. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.